This question says that in the illustration below, uh, the centers of the circles are at the vertices of a square of side length two. What is the area of the blue shaded region? Now the vertice um, of a square is basically the corners of the square. So if you can just highlight those centers of these circles, uh, you can see here that when we join them, we're going to have a square. So let's actually do join them so that you can see this square. So this is the square that you got over here. Now it says that this square has a side length of two, all right? So it is a side length of two. Now, if it is a side length of two, that would mean that you have one here and you have one here. So which means that the radiuses of all these circles is um, one, all right? Now, it says that we need to find the area of the blue shaded region. Now, let's see. So if you look at these circles here, if we come here, you can see that these, um, uh, this um, square basically takes a quarter of each circle. So each, sorry, a quarter of each circle here. So we have a quarter here. So this is the first quarter the second quarter, a third quarter, and the fourth quarter. Now, if you have four quarters, that makes a full circle. So that means that you have a circle and a square in here. And in order to get the area of the blue shaded region, you just need the area of um, the square minus the area of the circle, and then we'll be able to get that blue shaded region over there. All right, cool. Now, what is the area of the square? Now, the area of the square is simply S squared. So the side length of the square is two squared it is equal to four. Now, what is the area of, uh, of this circle? The area of the circle is basically pi R squared. Now, what is R in this case? As we discussed that the R of these circles is one. So that would be pi one squared, which is equal to pi. And so the area of the square, which is four minus the area of um, the circle, which is pi is going to give us the area of that shaded region over there. And that shaded over region over there would have an area which is four minus pi. So I think that was uh, not too bad. Um, yes, so if you have any questions on that, please put that in the comment uh, section below. Let's move into the next question. All right, so the next question says, um, consider the circle with radius two and center zero, zero. Um, it then says that, and the circle of radius three with center six, zero. And it says there's a unique line that lies above the circles and tangent to them. Find the slope of this line, the following diagram may be helpful. All right, cool. Now let's just write these centers first. So we'd have a center here and a center there. Now, what you should notice about these centers is that they need to be in the same horizontal lane because uh, both of them have a zero Y coordinate, which means they are about in the same lane. Okay, cool. So we do know that here we have a radius of two. Okay, and then we do know there that we have a radius of three. All right, cool. But we do know that the distance between these circles, well, it's basically from zero to six and it's in the same horizontal line. So the distance between them would be six. And so if we can compute, and so from there you can see that you can actually be able to compute a rectangle, which would look something more like this. Now, this is quite a bad one. Let me try and fix it. It'll be slightly shorter and be here. And let's just bring it down a bit. So we have a rectangle that is there. It'll be close there. So this would be two. And um, this would also be two here. So the other two would be here. But then I also want you to notice something. Um, if you then push on further, 
this extra bit here would be one. Why is it one? Because the radius is equal to three. So if this part is two, then this would be one. The other side that I should be able to know is that since this is six, this would also have to be six. Okay, cool. And then the other thing that you should be able to notice is that, um, um, is that since this, um, since this uh, line comes from the center to the tangent, well, it would form a right angle. So then if it forms a right angle, I could have, I will have a right angled triangle, uh, I'll have a right angled triangle, which already has two sides. Now let's draw this right angle triangle. It will basically be this right angle triangle here. Okay, and it has side one and uh, this side over here, which is the hypotenuse. And so if we can be able to find this line, we can be able to use a tan ratio to be able to work out the slope. So let's find this side. Well, we do know that if this is, so if we say x squared plus one squared, so this side plus this side should give us a hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is six, so that would be six squared. And so to solve that, you're gonna say it's x squared is equal to 36 minus one. So x squared would be equal to 35. And so x would be equal to the root of 35. So that would be the root of 35. So then to find the slope of this, we can then use the tan formula or the tan ratio. Now the tan ratio is opposite over adjacent. So what's the opposite side here to the angle here? So the opposite side is one over the root of 35, which is the adjacent side to the angle. So over the root of 35. Okay, cool. Now we don't necessarily have uh, one over root of 35, but one over 35 is basically the same as root 35 over 35. Now you can put this in the calculator and you will see it will give you the exact same thing. But how do we get there? Because you're not supposed to use a calculator in the exam. Well, we can just multiply by root 35 over root 35. Now root 35 over root 35 is one, but if we start with the multiplication, you can say, well, one times root 35 gives you root 35, and then you can say root 35 times root 35, and it will give you a 35. Because remember that the square root of A times the square root of A is basically just A. So then the root of 35 multiplied by the root, the root of 35 is only going to give you 35. And so your answer for that question would be D. All right, cool. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, please put that in the comment section. So let's go into the next question for now. Cheers.